going to look today at sequences. You may have done some work on this before, perhaps in year seven, perhaps also in your primary school. But we're going to have a look at sequences today. We're going to look at finding sequences, recognising them, and then moving on to being able to identify them algebraically. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you three sequences. Now these are pattern sequences. And I want you to look at them. I want you on your board to draw the next three shapes that, you, um, that will go into that sequence and write down the rule that you are using to move from one shape to the next one in the sequence. Everyone clear? That's the first one. So those are the first three shapes in that sequence. I want you to write down the next three. That's the next one. And that's the next one. Give you a couple of minutes to see if you can write down the next three in each of those sequences. And then the rule. The last ones, the third ones in each of my sequence. So we want the next three. So who's going to have a go at this first one for me? Casper, do you want to come and draw up this, this, the next three in this first one? Just about the other one, then, don't you? This one is really small. Just do the next three in that one for me. In reach? Yeah. You might want to make the next one slightly smaller so you can yeah. reach, yeah? You don't have to have them the same size as that, do you? Yeah. And the next one? Everyone get the same, yes? You might, because Casper's drawing on the board, you probably didn't have a gap between the bits like that, but that's fine, because I know you were doing that on the board. Um, Charlotte, can you tell me what the rule was that you wrote down for that? Um, if you add, um, arrow. add one arrow. Um, for each, um, different one. each time? Is that yeah. what you mean? Yeah. So add one arrow each time. Did anyone have anything different to that? No? Is, if I did the next one along, if I did this, would that be right? No. No, why not, Tyler? Because the other arrow's on the side. Okay, so it's not quite right, is it? So is there anything we can do to the rule to make it slightly more precise, Casper? It means to add one arrow each time to either the bottom of the whole sequence or to the top of the bottom. Okay, so add one arrow each time. I'll say to the top, but you're right, you could say to the bottom. To the top. That's a bit more precise now, isn't it? So if somebody else was to do it, not looking at what you had, they could probably now do it accurately, yeah? Is there any end to this sequence? No. I mean, is there any end to this sequence? No. no. How far can it go? As far as I want, can't it? How many arrows could I have one on top of the other? Casper? An infinite amount. Right, that's the word I was looking for. Good, an infinite number. It could go on forever and ever. Infinitely. Right, okay. Um, and I haven't got a board rubber. And I need a board rubber. Uh, right, I'm going to remove that one because it's going to run into the other one. So, let's have a look at the next one. Uh, Lauren, do you want to come and add on to that? It's a bit easier then, it's a bit more down. So if you can do, that's the third one, so if you can do the next three. Square to, to the side, to the front. 
Good. I like the fact that you're thinking now about making it precise. It's hard to know whether to say the front, whether that's the front or that's the front, or the side. But I know what you mean. You want to add one so it attaches on, yes? Okay. Add one square. Anybody have anything different? No. Okay. All right. What about this then? If I start with this one, now my second one, watch the way I'm drawing this. Or my third one. They get bigger. No, they're not meant to. <laughs> That's bad drawing. Did I add a square on each time? Yeah. Watch again. There's the first one. This is the second one. No, you were um, starting a new one. Um, you started a new line, but with one more than the last one. One more. With one more to um, square. Okay, so here's my, this is the next one. So that's the first one. Did I add a square on each time? Are you sure? You added two. Sounds okay. Watch carefully what I'm drawing. So this is the first one. We're happy that's a square, yes? Yeah. Let me just draw it once more and then I'll ask you. That's the first one again. I'm going to create the second <coughs> one in the sequence. What did I add on it, Anna? Um, you're like adding the square but like not the line that's connected. Yeah, what I'm actually adding, quite right, well done, is that, isn't it? And I'm attaching it to it. So I could say add one square each time, and if I did, I would have to do this, wouldn't I? But actually, I could have written that slightly differently. And I could have written, instead of add one square, I could have written, written add three lines forming three sides of a square each time. That would have created the same sequence, and both are correct, but there is another way of looking at it, isn't there? Right, now, this one. Um, I've forgotten your name again, sorry. Oh, Cantor. Cantor. Does this sequence go on forever? Um, yeah. Yeah? I could have... Infinite. Right, I could have an infinite number of squares or three-sided shapes added on. Okay, good. Right, let's have a look at the next one. Let's get rid of that one. I'm going to move this one. Actually, I'll leave it where it is. Right. Um, Matthew, do you want to come and draw onto the end of this one? Draw the next one sort of along from this one, please. You don't need to draw it down there, you can draw it a bit higher up if it's easier for you. But what would be the next three that you would draw? Okay, so that's your, you've added on one, yeah? Keep going. Okay. So if we, leave, if we leave that one there, try and draw me a new one there so we can see how it builds up. Okay, so that's your next one. Okay, and then the last one that we're going to draw. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. Right, so you added on this one, then that one, and then that one. Did anybody have any alternatives to that? Did everybody have exactly the same? You had something slightly different, Tyler? I ended up with the same thing. Yeah. I didn't do the first one, I did it as the second one. Ah, oh, right, okay. So you started off, that was the one that I gave you. So you added this one first, did yeah. you? So you went one, and then the next one, you did this one at the top, did you? Yeah. Okay, but you ended up with the same thing, okay? So that was an alternative. Anybody have any other alternatives? No? Okay, what do you think about, well, let's just do this bit first. Um, what would be your next one, Tyler? Mine would probably be uh, next to one. Like that? Yeah. And then at the bottom? Yeah. Okay, anybody have any alternatives for your next one? Okay, so Casper, what was your rule for this one? Well, it was add a triangle if it's the 
the first triangle facing uh, upside down, then add the triangle, the opposite, and then like if it's facing up, then you add a triangle that's facing down. So add a triangle facing the opposite way. So it's the one before. The one before. So if I done, so this is where we started. <coughs> from. So if this one was facing down, so you want to face what go facing up. If I'd yeah. done this, would this have followed your rule? Well, no, because I need to add, and also you have to add one to the bottom. Right. So add a triangle facing the opposite way on both the top and the bottom. Alternately, top yeah. and bottom. Alternately. Yeah. yeah. Alternately. Top and bottom. Okay. Anyone have anything slight, any different to that? Does that make sense? Is that an infinite sequence? Yeah. Okay. What about if I'd done this? What about if I'd done this? So that's the one. Put it up here. So that's where we are. What about if my next one had been this? So this is the starting point again. What about if our next one had been that? Would that have still continued to build properly, do you think? Or not, Casper, what do you think? Well, no, because if it's going up, yes, or diagonally, then it, it will then add to the one there, so it will like, spread out differently. So like left and right. So you're not happy with this one? No. Because, say again, why? Because me? if that one was put there, then the other one has to be put like to the other side, to the right hand side of the triangle. To the other Come and show me what you mean. So it's hard to point, isn't it? Come and yeah. show me what you mean. So if it was added here, yeah. then it would be added here. Right? And what, the next one afterwards? The next one. Why? Why would that be there? Because if it's going diagonally, Right. Because, so if it's going like that, it, yeah. everyone's putting it like that. So if it's going diagonally, if you put it there, yeah. then it will put it here, not like there, because oh. it has to be connected to this triangle. Okay. Right. So you, you're seeing a connection between this triangle and the one next to it, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so if I... That's my next one. What about this is the next one after that then? I think it can still carry on. You think it can carry on? Yeah. Where would the next one be? Um, well, the opposite... Uh, can we show me? Much easier to show me than to try and explain that. Right, okay. That would be the next one. Okay, thank you. So it could do that, yeah? You're right too, Casper, that there is another way to interpret it. But it could do that, and then the next one would do that, and the next one would do that. And I'd get a line going up like that. I could still say the rule was to add a triangle each time the opposite way round. But I'd have to explain slightly differently where that was going to go. Is that an infinite sequence? Yes. Yeah? Is the way that we did it an infinite sequence? Yes. Yeah. What's the difference between the third sequence and the first one and the second one that we did. What's the difference between them? Hello. The first and the second are more like easy to understand. Yeah. And they don't have like different ways, whereas number three has different ways. No, number three has different ways. Anybody want to add to that? Are you all happy with that as an explanation? Happy? Yeah. Yeah, the, it's not as clear cut, is it? Yeah. There's a number of options I could use for number three, whereas numbers one and two I couldn't. Right. We've got some sequences. These are pattern sequences. We will move on to number sequences soon, but we're just sticking with patterns. I'd like you to try now, clear your board, draw two of your own sequence of patterns, draw the first three, and then give them to your neighbour to see if they can work out the next three, and they need to write down the rule. So you need to draw them so that they are infinite sequences, and that somebody else can carry on that pattern. Alright? Now if you're in a three here, then just rotate, rotate around the three of you and then, and then you two swap and Tyler and Darrell you swap, okay? So give you a couple of minutes to draw your own two sequences. Look at a couple of them before we 
move on and, and uh, develop this a little bit more. We are right first, yeah? Okay, so, do you want to show me one of yours? Yeah. Do you want to come and draw it for me? Yeah. It'd be much easier than trying to describe it. If you need to bring the board up to remind yourself, oh, do yeah. so. Okay. You're okay? Yeah. So let's just have a look at a couple of them. And then eventually it would close in, wouldn't it? Yeah, and then it would keep going around to make it look thicker. Oh, so you'd carry on going around so each of the Ks would get thicker and thicker yeah. and thicker. Oh, right, okay. What would be, eventually, what would happen if you did that? It'd literally be a thick line of a circle yeah. and it'd be a circle. Can you imagine taking it even further than that, going beyond just a thick line? What would eventually, might eventually happen? It'd literally be a big black dot. Yes. Yeah. Eventually, it would turn into this big, black, solid dot with possibly little bits coming out. Yeah. yeah. So it is infinite, but it's, it's a slightly odd infinite sequence, yeah. isn't it? But it is. It is. Nice one. Okay. Um, I quite like that one. Uh, I think it was Darrell's, wasn't it? Your bottom one. Can you do your bottom one for me on the board, Darrell? Yes? Yeah. Thank you. Watching Durell draw that was quite useful in terms of seeing what he did. What's your rule? Um, add one, uh, add one line each time. Okay. So if I on the next one went, uh, it has to be like up then down, kind of okay. diagonal. That's diagonal. <coughs> Tricky. <isn't coughs> I know what you mean, and visually you can see what's going on, can't you? Because watching you do it, we know that you want that line there, don't we? And then we know that you want that line there. Actually describing it's quite a bit harder, isn't it? Yeah. It's also interesting, isn't it? Because you started with the V, and Tyler, when you interpreted that, Tyler interpreted it like this. That was the first one. So he interpreted the next one as adding on a V. Whereas you set it up by adding on a single line. So actually, the, there was quite a difficulty between the two of you to get that, to see what was in your head for Tyler to interpret that, yeah? yeah. Um, Charlotte, was it you that did... Can I just see yours again? There's one other, I think it was one of yours. Um, yes, can you do that one for me? Can you draw that one? Is that, was that yours, Noreen? Yes. Right, you draw it then. I wasn't sure which way around your boards were. Can you come and draw that one for me? That's the, which will be the last one we'll do before we move on. I do want to do that as well. Go. That's your first one, is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just draw me the next one then. Thank you. 
see what Tahoe is going. Right, this is an un unusual one. What's unusual about this one compared to the other ones, Fred? Um, she takes a hexagon away. No, she doesn't have one on. Take one hexagon away each time. So the next one will have three hexagons, and then two hexagons, and then one hexagon. And then what's going to happen? That's fine. We're going like inside out. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. It'd be quite hard to draw, wouldn't yeah. it? But we can sort of think about it going inside out, can't we? So it, this one has six, and then five, and then four, three, two, one, zero. What would I naturally put next? Minus one. one. Minus one. And so on. That means it carries on. So it's an unusual one. So is this, in number terms, it can carry on. But visually, could that carry on forever? Not really. No, it's not an infinite sequence in the same way, is it? It's not wrong, because it didn't tell you anything. But it is different, isn't it, to the ones that we've had before. So, what we've looked at then, so far, is we've looked at sequences, we've looked at them being infinite, and we've looked at rules, words, that we can use to create a full sequence to be able to allow us to carry on drawing. But it's quite tricky. There's some limitations in what we're doing, particularly with the drawing. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to start with this one again. Think carefully about the way I'm drawing this one. And I want this time, I want to think about, so that's my first one, that's my second, and that's my third. I'm just going to draw a fourth one here. And I'm going to think about putting this into a number form instead of pictures. So I'm going to think about what number I could attach to this one and then this one and then this one that would represent a part of this sequence. It wouldn't tell me what it looked like, but it would represent a part of that sequence. So what number do you think I could attach to this picture? One. I could call it one, but that's really, I'm just saying this is my first picture. What other number could I attach to this one? Sides, four. Good, number of sides. And there are four of them, aren't there? Right. So if I call this one four, think about the way I draw, drew this one. What would this one be, Seven. Your Honor? Seven. Seven, good. Because remember, I left the square and I added on three sides. And what would this one be? Ten. Ten. And what would this one be? Yeah, and what would the fifth one be? Sixteen. Sixteen. Each time I'm adding on three. So the next one would be nineteen and so on and so forth. So what we're going to look at now is we're going to look at number sequences. Quite often you could take a number sequence and create a pattern from it. But we're going to now look at the number sequences rather than the patterns. But we can get the numbers very often from the patterns. Okay? So you might want to turn your board over or clean the board of pictures that you've got on there. I want you to write down the next three numbers in each of these sequences. Quite straightforward, it won't take you very long. Um, Matthew, first one. Please. Um, I'll give you those one. Minus four, minus six, what's next? Minus eight, minus ten, minus twelve. Okay, what's the rule? I'll take away two each time. Take away two. Much easier, isn't it, the rules when you're doing this? Take away two each time. Um, Charlotte, what about the second one? What's it, we've got minus nine, minus six. What's next? Um, plus three. Oh, um, minus three. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, zero. Yes. Ten three. Good. And the rule? And plus three each time. Yes, you add three each time. Good. Right, the third one. Um, Darrell, what have you got? Um, 20, uh, yeah, 27, yeah. 39, 53. What was your rule? Oh, um, it adds two each time. No. Wait. 
You add three, then five, eight. Yeah, go on. You add, so if I put the, the other ones in, one, four, we add three, and then five, and then seven. And then nine. Have nine. you added nine? To get from 16 to 27. No, 11. You added 11, but you've told me you want to add nine. So are you happy with the adding nine? Are you happy that that's what you want to do? Add three, add five, add seven, add nine. Are you really what I'm asking you is are you happy with the 27, yes, which is adding 11, or would you prefer to add the nine? Add the nine, so it'd be 25. Okay. So make that one 25. Then what do I want to add on? Um, 11. Okay. What would that make that one? Uh, 37. Nearly. 25 plus 11. Of 36. 36, good. And then what do you want to add on? Um, plus 13. Good, 13. And what would that make your last number? 36 plus that 13. You want to add on? 14. Good, 49. Good, well done. Okay. Everyone happy with those numbers now? Yes. Yeah. Because you have the right rule, but you just didn't do your adding quite right. Yeah? Uh, does anybody recognise these numbers? Square numbers. They're square numbers, aren't they? Yes. They are. And I don't know whether you've ever noticed before that if you keep adding on two to the difference, you will get the next square number as well. Um, right, the last one, which starts 5, 4, 2, minus 1, minus 5. Um, Charlotte, what did you have next? No, I wasn't sure. You weren't sure, okay. Well, let's, let's see whether you, you can see when you're given the answer. Uh, you subtract 1 in the first one. Yeah. And then you subtract 2. Yes. And you start subtract, subtract 3. Yes. Subtract 4. Then you subtract 5. And 6. And okay. 7. And right. Good. So we're going to subtract 1 more each time. So if I take away 5 from minus 5, what do I get? Minus 10. Okay. And then the next one would be? Minus 16. Yeah. Minus 23. Minus 23. Good, well done. Are these all infinite sequences? Will they go on forever? <coughs> they are, aren't they? Um, same difference. What's the same about each of them? And what's different about one or two of them? What do you think, looking at them, what's the same? What's different? Tyler? One, uh, the first two have easy rules, whereas the, other, the next two you have to look more into it. Right, good. The first two have fairly straightforward rules, don't they? add or subtract a number each time, and these two are more complicated. Can we say anything a little bit more about how and why they're more complicated? Because I think you're right, they are. Is there anything about why these are more complicated? What makes them more complicated, Tyler? Uh, it's just... They change it, they change the number that they go up. Yes, the number that they go up by or go down by changes. Does it change according to a rule or does it change randomly? It changes according to a rule. Yeah, it changes according to a rule. It does have a rule, the same as these first two, but the rules are different, aren't they? This is adding on two each time, this is taking off one more each time. So they are more complicated rules. Now there are all sorts of sequences in maths. These are just some examples. The ones that we're going to focus on are these sort. These sorts where we take away a, a, the same number, or we add on the same number each time. They have a special name. These sorts of sequences have a special name. Um, all sorts of sequences do, but these ones that we're particularly interested in at the moment, and they relate to the pictures that we drew as well, they have a particular name, and they're called arithmetic sequences. And an arithmetic sequence is where you add or subtract the same amount each time. So, if I give you a sequence, I get rid of this, because those sequences, whilst interesting, are not the ones that I want to focus on. If I add on the same amount each time, so this one I showed you, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16. How much am I adding on each time? Three. Plus 3. I am adding on 3 each time. The difference between 
the terms of my sequence is the same. Right? Now, I'm going to write that down. The difference between the, now this is an important word, the terms of my sequence are, I said, the same each time. Now there's a mathematical word for something that's the same each time. Equal is a good word for it, and in some contexts it would be the right word for it. But in this particular con context, there's another word for something that is the same each time. And that is the word constant. You may not have come across the word constant used in this sort of way before. But that means the same each time, unchanging. So, we've now got a particular type of sequence, which we know the name of, it's an arithmetic sequence, and we know that an arithmetic sequence has what's called a constant difference. I've said between the terms of my sequence. Can anybody explain what I mean by a term of my sequence? I've said the terms, the difference between the terms. Karina, really? Sorry, the number. The number, yes. This is the first term the second term, the third term, and so on. All right? So there's quite a lot of information in there in terms of the words that we use and the type of sequence. So, what we're going to do, hopefully, um, if not today, then we'll finish it on Wednesday, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we identify this type of sequence and how we make sure that we know algebraically how to do it. Now, I'm not going to ask you to write them down this time, I'm going to ask you to tell me. So, Lauren, can you tell me the next three numbers in this sequence here? 10, 12, 14. Absolutely. And, Verana, in that one? Um, 11. Go on. Yes, keep going. 11. 13. Yep. And 15. Right. Okay. Very easy, isn't it? Now, must remember to bring a bit of water up next time. So, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. A very simple sequence, isn't it? What sequence is it? Do you know what sequence that is? Two times table. Yes, it is. It's the two times table. One times two is two. Two times two. Four, three times two is six. Okay, and so on. I'll just write this next one here. Now then, one times two is two, two times two is four, three times two is six, four times two is eight. That stays the same, doesn't it? Because we're multiplying by two, it's the two times table. The first number in the two times table is two, the second number is four, the third number is six. Yes? So, in each case, because it's the two times table, I'm multiplying two by this number here. Now, this number here changes every time, doesn't it? Yeah? Do you know how I write a number that changes every time in maths? What do I do? I've got a number that might, be, might have a different value from one sum to the next. What do I do? I can't write two times any number. I can't write two times a number that gets bigger every time because that's not what we do in maths. What do we do? I don't know. Uh, You're not sure? Would you put A? A, the letter A? Yeah. I could indeed put the letter A. Good. I'd use a letter, wouldn't I? I'm actually going to use N because it's the letter most commonly used. So I'm saying two times any number. One, two, three, four. And if I do two times any number, 2 times 3, 2 times 7, 2 times 22, I'm always going to get a number in the 2 times table. Yeah? Is everyone happy with that? And all I've done is said, well, I don't want to write this 2 times table out every time. I want to write out, I want to write out uh, one expression, one thing that tells me that I'm doing the 2 times table. <coughs> 
So how would I write the three times table? Uh, three times, as in like, using n or... Yeah. Three times uh, one or n. Three times n. And that would be my three times table, wouldn't it? Because it would tell me that if I multiplied three by any number, I would get a number in the three times table. Yeah? How would I write out the seven times table, Fred? Um, seven times my number. Yeah, seven times n, seven times any number. And that would be my seven times table. Now, do you know in algebra that we very rarely write the multiplying? Yeah, we don't, do we? We don't bother. So in fact, I would write that as 2n. Good. And I would write this as 3n. And I would write that as 7n. Okay, now, we've got part way through where we wanted to get to. So we're going to carry on with this on Wednesday. We're going to build this up so that you can use this algebra to write these sequences, okay? Alright?